Okay, now we need to validate the token. And the first thing we're gonna do is just grab the token in, authenticate the user, and then redirect them to the intended page that they wanted to visit. But then what we're gonna do is go in and first of all, check if the token is expired, which is really important. We don't wanna leave it like two weeks or a month and then still have the link valid. And then we also want to check if it uh, belongs to that user by the email that we send through in the query string. So um, let's go and implement our route. Let's go ahead and fill in the controller method and then we'll be good to go. So let's come over to our routes. Um, again, we need a very similar method to this. I'm just gonna duplicate this down. Again, this will be a get route, but this time we'll have a wildcard in here because uh, we're able to pass through the actual token. So let's pass that in and then we'll go ahead and create some kind of validate token method. Okay, so over to the controller, let's create this method out. So public function validate token. Into this, we're gonna pull in our request, but we want to use root model binding to pull the token in. Now, if you're not sure what root model binding is, it just means that we can basically say, well, we're expecting in an instance of a user login token model here, and I'm gonna call that token. And in here, we want to automatically look that up. It just means that we don't have to do something like token equals user login token, find by an ID or a, uh, another field. So in here then, let's just do a die dump on the token and we'll get this working. Now at the moment, this isn't gonna work because this will by default look it up by the ID. So if for example, we were to click on this latest link that we were sent, uh, and of course we pull in our model at the top first of all so user login token we can see no query results for model so we can see that this is in the url but it's not looking trying to look it up by its id so it's trying to look it up by this here so what we can do is over in our user login token model we can actually uh, set the root key name that we expect to do this it's as simple as saying get root key name and then just returning a string now in our case, we're expecting this to be pulled in by its token, and now we see the following. So now we have a user login token. And of course, because we uh, have this set up so it belongs to a user, we can also grab the user from this particular token as well. So now that we have the token, let's go over to the controller again, and we want to start to think about how we do this. The first thing I wanna do is delete the token. Now that might seem really strange, but with the stuff that we're doing here, we want to just make sure the token is just as a kind of safety precaution deleted immediately. We're still going to be able to use the model here to actually say things like is expired later on, but it just means that as a kind of first step, we delete it. That's really important. So now we just want to log the user in and then later we will go and just update here to do some checks. So to do this, we just say auth login, we pass in the user, Remember that's token user. And then remember we have that request in here. So we just come over, remember, so we can pass this through. So all we wanna do is say request, remember, and that's it. And then we can redirect them. So we can return, redirect to the intended page, really important because we want them to go back to the page that they were trying to access. And that is pretty much it. Let's just pull in our auth facade and we can check that this signs us in. So uh, let's close this off and let's delete the inbox uh, contents. Come over here, enter my email address, send the magic link over, go over to the mailbox, click on that link and we should be signed in. And there we go. So as this is, this isn't bad. There's nothing necessarily wrong with this, but with anything to do with authentication, we want to just add a couple of additional checks just to see if something has uh, expired or uh, using that email that we pass in in the uh, query string as well. We wanna check that a token belongs to that user. So the first thing that we're gonna do is over on our user login token model, we're gonna implement an is expired method. And this will basically just check if the uh, created at date of the token uh, has a difference in seconds greater than a specific expiry that we define. So what I like to do is say at the top of the model, I'm gonna create a constant here and I'm gonna say token expiry. 
and I'm going to set this to say 30 seconds. Now I think 30 seconds is probably a little bit too short. Uh, probably a couple of minutes would be fine. So you could do something like 120 seconds, uh, but we'll leave it at 30 because that means that we can very easily just wait for 30 seconds and test that it is actually expiring at the time that we give it. So we're going to uh, down here, go ahead and implement this method. In fact, we'll do it just up here. So we're going to say is expired. And this is really simple because uh, with Eloquent, when we use our created at and updated at columns, we get back a carbon instance and we can use carbon's functionality to very easily uh, test this. So we can say created at and we're going to say diff in seconds. And the difference in seconds is between the time this was created and the current time. So we just use carbon now and we want to check that that's greater than self token expiry. And that's it. That will tell us if it's expired, if the time that it was created is greater than 30 seconds. So just to make sure that we have the carbon library pulled in at the top. And if you're not familiar with the carbon library, just go ahead and uh, check the GitHub link that I'll leave in the course links and you can see and read all about this. OK, so this is good enough then to check if it's expired. So we can just very quickly implement our if statement here. Again, this is entirely optional, so you can leave this out. We now have control over e either do we want this or do we not want this? So we're going to say is expired. And if it is expired, we want to redirect to a particular page. And I'm just going to redirect to login slash magic. And let's implement a, a kind of error flash notification as well. And just say that magic link has expired. And of course, what we can do is come over to resources here, over to views, layouts, where we created that notification partial. We can duplicate this and go ahead and change this over to error. And the class here is danger within bootstrap. So what we can now do is sign out, go ahead and log in, enter our email address, send the magic link over, go over to our mailbox, but not click it for about 30 seconds. So I'm just going to literally pause the video and wait for 30 seconds and then we'll try and access this. Okay, so I've waited for about a minute. Obviously, if you want to test this, you can lower the expiry. But when I click on this, we should now see that magic link has expired. Uh, and of course, what we can then do is just go ahead and request another one. Uh, when that comes through, click on it. And again, we're signed in. Perfect. So the next thing I want to do is remember we have that query string in there with the uh, email. We can just use this as a kind of another form of protection just uh, against anyone trying to uh, basically try lots of tokens. Now, it's not entirely uh, required, but I like to always add another layer of protection in here. So what we're going to do is something like if not token belongs to email, and we're just going to say request email because remember we get that in the query string. Uh, then we're going to do a very similar thing here and we're just going to redirect. So we'll implement this method in a minute. So we'll just say, I don't know, invalid magic link, whatever you want to say. OK, so belongs to email then. That's obviously a method that we need to create over on our user login token. And again, it's very simple. So let's create a method here belongs to email. We pass through an email and into this, we're going to return this user. So we're checking if that token did match. Well, does the email address also provide match with the linked user? We're just going to say where email equals that email address. We're going to grab the count and we're going to check that that's equal to one. And what we can do is wrap this in parentheses here and go ahead and cast that to a Boolean if we want to as well. So there we go. What we can do is test this out as well. Come over to here, go ahead and log in, enter our email address, hit send magic link, come over here. And rather than click this directly, we're going to go ahead and copy the link address. I'm going to duplicate this, paste it in, and I'm going to change this to alex at codecourse.org. And you can see we get an invalid magic link error. And to be honest, that pretty much covers it. We've now gone ahead and given the ability to actually generate the link. We click on it. We do a couple of uh, necessary checks and then we go ahead and sign the user in with that preference if they want to be remembered. Redirect them to the intended page, which again is really important because they might have tried to access a page but been redirected to the login page. And that is pretty much it. Now, in the next part, what we're going to look at is something that's 
not entirely necessary, but this is just generally going through and clearing up any tokens in here that the users haven't used. Because remember, when we go ahead and uh, request a token, it's placed in here. If the user never clicks on that link, maybe once a day, we want to just go through and get rid of any expired links. Entirely optional, but we're gonna cover that in the next part.